Look at this beautiful track and these amazing new cars. The GT2 DLC is out for Assetto Corsa Competizione. What is it about and is it worth it? We are gonna quickly take a look at every single new car in this DLC and I'm gonna give you my first impressions. And of course we are also gonna take a look at the new track, the Red Bull Ring. Let's also try to find out how the GT2s behave on different tracks in comparison to the very popular GT3s and if they maybe are even faster, at least on some tracks. Because GT2s have in most cases more power than the GT3s and have less aero, so less drag. That already tells us what these cars might be like. Fast in a straight line, but slower in corners. What I can already tell you is that the GT2s are a lot of fun to drive and I predict them to be more popular than the GT4s which have a limited player base today. Just to quickly catch you up on the DLC details, the GT2 DLC just released on PC for 17.99 euros. The consoles will get this DLC later, we sadly don't have a date for it yet. For what is in this DLC, I think the price is fair, especially considering what some of the competitors charge for new cars and tracks. But enough of that, let's actually look at the new cars now. All six cars marked with GT2 here are new in this DLC. Interestingly enough, the Huracan Super Trofeo Evo 2 and the 488 Challenge Evo are grouped with the GT2s, though I don't know how competitive they would be in this category. The first car we are now gonna properly take a look at is the Audi R8 LMS GT2. And I think this one looks amazing by the way, let me know what you think in the comments. But since this was the first car that I tried from the GT2s, I needed some time to get used to them. Because, as you could see here, just putting the power on in the pit lane was already a little bit dangerous. And well, that's because these cars do have a lot of power. Way more than the GT4s, for example. And I think that's a good thing, and one of the reasons why they might be more popular than the GT4s. Because these cars are fast. But contrary to the GT3s, these cars don't have tire warmers, same as with the GT4s. You can see in the display in the bottom that the tires are ice cold and that's another reason why you really need to be careful at the race start or when coming out of the pits. But there are other differences to the GT3s. You can see here that I'm trying to brake at my normal braking point for GT3s and realize oh boy that's way too late. And well that's because these cars are fast, faster in a straight line than the GT3s, but also the brakes aren't as good as I've noticed. So. That's a reason why you need to really adjust your braking points a little for these. You're gonna see that in the laps that I'm gonna show you. And take a look here, I'm braking almost at the 200 board for the first corner at Monza, because you have so much speed. And yeah, by the way, I'm gonna now show you a full lap at a couple of tracks in the different cars, starting with the Audi R8 here at Monza. And I always did take the aggressive preset and only adjusted tire pressures a bit and switched brakes to one and t t did take a little bit less fuel. That's basically what I did. So no major setup work here, just basically the aggressive preset with minor, minor changes. And well, for the Audi R8, I'm now gonna have uh, let you have a little bit of a listen to the engine sound so you can really take in what this car is like. Sounds pretty much like I would expect an Audi to sound in ACC, I have to say, but that's not a bad thing. And talking a little bit more about the car, yes it was the first one that I tried from the GT2s, but it felt kind of stable to me and I didn't have any major problems getting to grips with it, just having to adjust braking points as I said, but that's a general thing for GT2s. By the way, we are at Monza for a reason because the best time that I was able to do at this track in the GT3 was a 148 flat. And even though I haven't really done many laps and there is no setup work here, we are doing the same time in this one. 
And that's because these cars are fast on one side. And that's a first thing to take away, I guess. But let's take a look at the next car. And that's the KTM Crossbow GT2. This one looks amazing in my opinion, very different. And I wanted to show you this. You can open the doors and, well, canopy more or less. And, well, it also drives quite nicely. We are now at Barcelona, another track that I wanted to try in the GT2s. And once again, braking points are the main thing you need to adjust. Other than that, this car, I think it drives even better than the Audi did. Very, very stable and still quite pointy. I really had a lot of fun in this one. From what I've heard or seen from uh, some preview streams of this DLC, it might not be the fastest right now, as at least on some tracks, but that's something we will figure out in the coming days and weeks. But as I said, it's fun to drive and I think it's also quite easy to drive. Probably the easiest to drive from the GT2s, in my opinion. But I'm gonna once again um, let you listen to the engine sound here. We have a nice five cylinder, so we'll have a listen. Sounds quite nice in my opinion. But let's now talk about one problem I have with this car. Let's play Spot the Apex. Can you see it? Hardly, right? And well, that's because of the cramped nature of this car. It really has bad visibility, especially going to the left. And also, the dash is on the wheel. And well, you can't see it really most of the time. By the way, Spot the Apex again for entering the chicane here. Really difficult in my opinion. But if you can get beyond that, the car is really great. It drives really nicely. Probably the best driving car out of the GT2s, in my opinion. Um, Time-wise, we are doing here a 145 high, so not as fast as the GT3s, I would say, but still okay. Let's now take a look at the Maserati GT2. This one is a really cool car, in my opinion, and also looks quite nice. And we are gonna put it to the test because we are now at Spa. And as you might be aware, it's a high downforce track. And what did I say at the beginning? These cars, compared to the GT3s, have reduced aerodynamics. That makes them faster in a straight line, but it also makes them, well, more difficult to get through fast corners, like En Rouge Radion here. And well, I did try to take this flat. I don't think it's possible in the GT2s. Maybe it is for really good drivers, but I don't think so. Probably a lot faster than I was able to do here. I did lift quite a lot and downshift, but still, I think it's gonna be very difficult, if not impossible, to go through there without lifting. Um, other than that, the car is a little bit more on the difficult side to handle, in my opinion. It's not terrible, but um, compared to the Audi and the KTM that I did take a look at first, it has a little bit more of a tendency to rotate when you maybe don't expect it or at least you need to be a little bit more careful both on throttle and on brake and well that is something that maybe you can adjust with setup i really don't know i haven't tried all that much um, setup work on these cars yet but just something to be aware of and once again i'm gonna ha let you have a listen to the engine sound of the maserati here Sounds a little bit like the Ferrari 296, doesn't it? I think it's the same engine, just maybe a little bit different. Pay attention now to the fast left-hander coming up here. That is one that I also tried to take flat because you do that in GT3s, but once again, I, I couldn't. I don't know, maybe it's possible with the right setup and the right driver, but I couldn't. But other than that, the Maserati GT2 is a fun car and I think with a little bit of setup work, you can make this a really good one. But time will tell how good or bad cars actually are. But I say, I would say it's a fun one. And that's the main thing. Let's now take a look at the next one, which is the Mercedes AMG GT2. This one, 
I'm not that impressed with looks wise. It's very similar to the GT3, just a little bit slimmer maybe. Um, the sound is also, well, I'm gonna let you have a listen later, uh, kind of similar. Um, but driving wise, I was surprised to find that this car was quite a handful. I don't know if it's just my driving style or if it's this car or the setup. Uh, might be a combination of all of those. But I really had trouble keeping this car under control. And we are now at Paul Ricard. And there is a reason for that as well. Because I wanted to see how fast can these cars go. And the Mercedes seemed to be one of the fastest. And we're gonna see how fast it can go on the very long straight here at Paul Ricard. By the way, if you enjoy this kind of content, click that like button and consider subscribing for more racing action on this channel. Thank you so much for your support. And coming up to 300 km an hour, are we gonna reach it? Not quite, I think it dipped into the 299. I think you can do it with a little bit of setup work and a little bit better driving. I think that's definitely possible to breach 300 km an hour, which is mental. But yeah. That's something that I wanted to try in these cars because they have so much acceleration and top speed because of the high power and low downforce. Really fun to do these experiments, I have to say. Um, I'm gonna now have let you have a listen to the engine sound once more with a little bit of lower gears and shifting. That's a lap at Porica. Once again, not the greatest time, I think. I think GT2s will be a little bit faster here, but time will tell once again. I'm not the best driver and I'm still getting used to these cars. Just something to take into account. Let's now take a look at the Porsches, because there are two. And the first one looks a little bit weird in my opinion, a little bit like a toy car. It's the Porsche 935. Uh, I'm not quite sure, let me know what you think of this look. It's a very limited one apparently, um, but yeah, I'm not the biggest fan. In terms of driving, I wanted to put the GT2s to the test on a more narrow and twistier, not very high speed track. because. We know on a track like Monza, we already did see that, the GT2s are gonna do well because of what they are about. Brands Hatch, on the other hand, doesn't have much high speed and, well, a lot of corners, some which also require downforce to go fast. So I really wanted to see what the GT2s are, uh, what, what they can do. And, well, the Porsche here did feel kind of okay. It was a little bit flimsy at certain points um, but still very controllable it just felt a little bit floaty i would say like it wasn't really all that connected maybe it's just very soft that might be once again a setup thing maybe something to adjust there but yeah overall it wasn't all that fast on brand's hedge compared to gt3s i can already say that um, but yeah i'm gonna let you have a listen here it's gonna sound very similar to the next one but still have a listen Not bad in my opinion. I mean, it's a Porsche, but yeah, it, it's something to like or not like, maybe. Uh, depends on your preference. And here's the next one, by the way. This is the Porsche 9912 GT2 Ares. And well, this one, I think, looks quite nice. And we are going to take this one, you guessed it, to the track that I promised we'd take a look at. It's the Red Bull Ring. Just ha have a look at this view coming out of turn one. This is stunning in my opinion. Such a gorgeous track and also really fun to drive. By the way, don't mind the invalid lap here. Uh, as you could maybe see turn one, I did go a little bit wide and invalidated, but uh, I don't think it's that important for just checking it out. And this Porsche 
handled kind of similarly to the first one we did take a look at. So once again, a little bit floaty, sometimes a little bit flimsy. Definitely also noticed understeer coming out of corners. Once again, don't know if that's maybe something that can be adjusted with setup to a degree, but yeah, it felt quite understeery coming out of corners and going on power. Um, so it might be just a characteristic of these cars. Um, but yeah, both uh, the cars of this pack, uh, of the GT2 pack and this track, um, amazing in my opinion. I've really had a lot of fun trying all this stuff out. And yeah, I don't know, Red Bull Ring I think is a track that will have great racing on it. I'm really looking forward to trying that out in, well, online racing. Because I think there's a lot of opportunity for overtakes here and also for, well, great racing. And I'm gonna definitely try that out and hopefully we'll be able to show you a race at some point in the future. But that's everything that I wanted to show you for the GT2 pack. So I've shown you every car, I've shown you the new, new track and now it's up to you to decide. What do you think? Do you think this is a good addition to ACC? What do you think of the GT2s in general and what do you think of the new track? Definitely let me know in the comments down below and also feel free to subscribe to the channel that would really help me out and i also um, will have some more videos coming up on acc where i do races in multiplayer and i hopefully will see you there thank you all so much for watching i've been ht racing and i will hopefully see you next time <laughs>